Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pristine Smiles. We are currently covering up the topic of gingiva. In the previous video, we saw about the microscopic and the microscopic anatomy of gingiva. If you haven't watched it yet, please click on the link below and watch it. Today we are going to be talking about keratinization. If you see this diagram, we have the outer epithelium, then this portion is the circular epithelium and here we have the junctional epithelium. The outer epithelium, it faces the oral cavity. Circular epithelium faces the tooth. It is not in contact with the tooth surface but it faces the tooth. When it's junctional epithelium, it provides contact between the gingiva and the tooth. Outer epithelium, when you see it is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and this has four layers. We saw this in the last video. We have the stratum basale right from the bottom. Then we have the stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum and finally the stratum corneum. So we are going to be checking out the details of each of these layers now. Stratum basale. These are cylindrical occupoid cells. The basal cells are present at the base, hence the name basale. They are separated from the underlying connective tissue by a basement membrane. Now these cells have the ability to divide. So as it divides into two cells, the older cell is pushed into the top layers. So it traverses right from the basale to the stratum corneum. And in the corneum, it is shed. This whole journey takes around a month. And it is called as the epithelial cell turnover time. The older cell, it begins its journey as a keratinocyte. The keratinocyte is shed in the stratum corneum. Now since the cell division occurs in this layer, the, the stratum basale is also known as the stratum germinativum. And it is considered as the progenitor cell compartment of the epithelium. The number of cells that divide in the basale is equal to the number of cells that share in the corneum. This ensures that there is an equilibrium maintained between cell, cell renewal in the stratum basale and cell loss in the stratum corneum. So what happens because of this is that the thickness of the epithelium remains constant. These cells they show a positive pass reaction or a positive per ionic acid shift stain reaction which indicates that the basement membrane contains carbohydrates. Next we have the stratum spinosum. Now stratum spinosum when you compare it with the base ally, these cells are slightly flattened and they have short cytoplasmic processes which are present something like a spine. So these spines they occur in regular intervals giving the cells a prickly appearance. These cells are attached by desmosomes and they also contain some granules in the cell. These granules are called as the autolyn bodies or keratinosomes. They contain acid phosphatase which is involved in destruction of the organelle membranes. Now as you go up further up, we encounter stratum granulosum. In stratum granulosum what happens? The cells become more flattened, they become almost parallel to the internal surface and they contain keratohyaline granules. Okay, these contain keratinosomes. Ordinary bodies, keratinosomes are present in stratum spinosum. Okay, the keratinosomes are present in spinosum. You say S and S. The keratohyaline granules are present in granulosum. 
they these produce keratin and then finally the stratocornea these are closely packed cells keratin cells they do not have any nuclei and any organelles so if you start noticing here what happens is as we go up the cells they start flattening out the number of tono filaments okay in the cytoplasm and the desmosomes increase so the tono filaments increase since as you go from basale towards the corneum where is the other organelles like we have mitochondria then the lamella of reticulum of endoplasmic reticulum and the golgi complexes these decrease from corneum to basale the keratinocyte undergoes differentiation as it goes from basale to corneum once it leaves the basal layer it cannot divide any longer but it shows the capacity for production of protein that is the tonofilaments and keratohyaline granules since at the top the energy producing organelles that is the mitochondria reticulocyte reticulum golgi complexes these are not present this cell is converted into a keratin filled cell and it is shed from the epithelial surface if you look at i uh, have a look at the biochemical changes which are occurring we saw that the mitochondria reticulocyte reticulum all these energy production system it is present more in the basal layers and it decreases as you go on top so what happens is in the basal layers there is an active tca or tricarboxylic acid cycle which is occurring now this layer is closer to the blood supply so it facilitates energy production through aerobic glycolysis whereas on the surface there is an active glucose 6 phosphatase and this is responsible for the production of rna this rna is in turn used for the synthesis of keratin proteins so just to recap there are certain important events which occur as the cell moves from the basal layer upwards these events we will divide them into the morphologic events that is change in the morphology or the structure of the cell and certain biochemical events morphology what do you see as you grow go on top there is progressive flattening of the cells and there is increase in number of tono filaments then the intercellular junctions which are there they are intercellular junctions coupled to keratin hyaline granule production and there is a disappearance of the nucleus when we come talk about biofilm or uh, biochemical we know that the tono filaments which are there are maximum in the stratum corneum whereas mitochondria reticulocyte reticulum golgi complexes they are maximum in the basal layer now this whole process is called as differentiation proliferation occurs in the basal layer it occurs by mitosis if keratinization is complete we have a superficial horny layer with no nuclei in the stratum corneum and a well defined granulosa that is called as ortho keratinized layer whereas in case of parakeratinized the stratum corneum shows pyknotic nuclei and the keratohyaline granules are dispersed so these organelles that we which are present in the basal layer mitochondria reticulocyte reticulum golgi complexes they decrease as you grow up what happens is spinosum the spinosum layer it contains acid phosphatase and this acid phosphatase is what is responsible for the destruction of all these organelles 
cells of gingiva are divided into keratinocytes and non-keratinocytes. The keratinocytes they comprise 90% of the gingival epithelium. They contain pigment peri-bearing granules which are present only in these cells and not in any other cells of the parenchyma. And as we have seen earlier, keratinization occurs from the basal layer to the coronal layer and it terminates in the formation of keratin. Next, coming to non-keratinocytes, we first have the melanocytes. Now, these melanocytes, they, are, they originate from the neural crest cells and they are present in basale and spinosum. They contain some organelles which are called as the pre-melanosomes which, which later form the melanosomes which is responsible for the synthesis of melanin. Now these contain the tyrosinase enzyme. Now this enzyme is responsible for the hydrolysis of tyrosine to dopa or dihydroxyphenylalanine. Now this in turn is progressively converted to melanin. The melanin granules are phagocytosed by melanophages or melanophores. So this was all about melanocytes. Our next non-keratinocyte is the Langerhans cells. Now Langerhans cells are located among the keratinocytes. They are present at the supra basal layers. So we saw melanocytes were present in the basal layer and the spinosum layers, whereas the glandular cells are in the supra basal layer. They belong to the reticuloendothelial system and they contain G specific granules or the verbo granules. They have a role in immune reaction as antigen presenting cells. And third, we have Merkel cells. These are present in the deeper layers and they have some nerve endings which are helpful in tactile perception. So this was all about keratinization and the cells of gingiva. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So the question for today is which layer of gingival epithelium shows abundance of mitochondria? Comment the answers below. See you for the next video. Thank you for watching.